In this film we're going to be looking at converting the Daypole N-Gage M7 tanks to DCC. So we're going to be using a high quality decoder, the Lentz Silver Mini. So this is the decoder in question. Now one of the bonuses of something like a Daypole tank loco is that they're not particularly sophisticated. So there's less work to do when you do a conversion. So I'm going to remove the, the cables that I'm not using, so the blue common return for functions, and then the white and the yellow wires which are to do with head and tail lights or other electrical functions. Purely we're just using orange and grey for the motor and red and black for the pickups. So the one thing that's missing, or the customer hasn't supplied me, are the instructions on how to get into them. So I've had a little search around the web, and it has to be said, there isn't much out there. But there are guys that have taken them apart, and I noticed that one of them, the rear bogey, had been taken off. So unclip that, just be careful of the two contacts in the middle. And then underneath there, there's a screw there, and the front screw here. Phillips screwdriver. Grab a tray for the bits. Always forget how awkward this is with the camera in the way. Right, still quite tight. So, oh. there we go. So that's the chassis. What I'm going to do is remove the capacitors and the suppressors. So I debated on soldering these components, but actually it's probably going to be cleaner and easier to get in there and snip them out. Less likely to do any heat damage to the the vehicle. It's always a bit brutal. I don't like taking snippers to models, but needs must. I need to think about where I'm going to locate the um, decoder. And cab's quite open, and I want to preserve that. But there is a little panel that comes out here, which means there's a bit of space down inside. So carefully bend these wires up. Should be able to find a bit of room at the back of the cab there where it will be fairly inconspicuous once everything's back together. The other thing that I'd quite like to do because we've got various quite brightly coloured wires is to come in and either paint or permanent marker pen just to reduce the the colour. So the next part is one of the those critical parts of a DCC conversion and oddly enough it's just getting the length of the wires right. See so too long and you end up having to package them everywhere too short and yes you're, you're starting again um, and soldering onto these soldering pads is possible but not fun. So I'm going to cut it with a little bit of extra length. Just gives me a bit of margin of error. And then just strip the wires down. So 
So I find it an advantage to pre-tin the wires because it makes the solder flow much quicker. It means that you put much less heat into the, the area that you're working on. I'm not going to try and do the soldering in front of the camera. I think it's fiddly enough as it is without having this thing in the way. So I've now soldered the chip to the motor and the contacts and the convention for contacts is that black is always the left side or the chassis of the loco and red is always the right or red to right. The orange then goes to the motor terminal that was connected to the red pickup and the grey goes to the motor terminal that was connected to the black pickup. And hopefully that will mean that the loco runs forward in the correct orientation with your controller. So I've put the rear bogey back on just to test it out. Just watch out for these two metal contacts. They're a little bit Heath Robinson to be fair and just make sure you don't fold them under the bogey. So I like to check out all decoder installs before we um, put them onto full power. So we're on the programming track. I'm using my Lens system. Uh, Lens decoder will work with any DCC system however. So I'm just going to go to my programming track and read an error code which is CV30 and because the loco is quite light I'm just going to put some weight on it just to push it down into the track there we are, we come up with a nice zero, that's what we want to see so it's a fairly unsophisticated conversion um, there shouldn't be any short circuits but it is worth checking it out on the programming track before you risk giving it full power That's the fun part of any conversion, is repackaging it all back into the loco. So, try and get this in here. So we're all back together now. I don't think that's too obtrusive. The, the decoder is in the back there. Most viewing distances you're not going to notice it. Um, the wiring just runs along the floor here. But again, end gauge, you know, not very often that you get this close. So we've got a couple of them done now. The rear one's a, a newer loco, runs a little bit smoother. They're not bad, they're both on factory settings for the Lentz chip. I was having a few problems with the contacts on this one so what I've actually done is solder jumper wires onto the bogey rather than relying on those little pinpoint spring clips just to transfer the power it's made a big difference on that run nice and smoothly. So I've completed the third conversion. Um, the Lent Silver Mini Decoder is a fully NMRA compliant DCC decoder. It's all work with any DCC control system. And so they've got brilliant motor control. Down to the mechanical limits of the loco of course. And it's a nice small decoder to fit in tight spaces.